When Gareth Southgate took on the role of England manager in 2016, the national team was at one of its lowest points. They had exited that summer's European Championships in humiliating fashion to Iceland, taking the country's wait for a victory in a tournament knockout game to 10 years, and had just seen Roy Hodgson's replacement Sam Allardyce leave his post after one match following allegations of improper conduct. Almost five years later and he has surpassed the expectations of many who doubted his appointment, becoming the first three Lions manager since Alf Ramsey to lead the side to consecutive semi-finals at major tournaments, taking them to a first major final since 1966 and blooding a new generation of talent which has not only reinvigorated fans' support of the team by delivering on the pitch, but also become excellent role models with their actions away from it. But how did such a seemingly unspectacular manager end up changing the culture of the England national team? Let's find out. Gareth Southgate may not have been many people's first choice to take the England job when he did. After the misery of Euro 2016, Sam Allardyce was seen as the kind of no-nonsense appointment to kick the three Lions back into shape, while Southgate was considered by some sections of the media and public as too humble and mild-mannered a figure who simply wasn't big enough for the task at hand. But this was an unfair assumption. By the time he took the job, he had over 20 years of leadership experience, having captained Crystal Palace, Aston Villa and Middlesbrough, and having taken the manager's job at Borough as soon as he retired. He of course had a tough three years in the Riverside dugout, marred by relegation and fallouts with high-profile players, hardly something you'd want on your CV when going for one of the most high-pressure jobs in international football. But Southgate was very much thrown into the deep end with his job at Borough, and it was clearly a steep learning curve for him, with big decisions made in the transfer market and a financial crisis towards the end of his tenure. As he later said, I needed to go away and learn more about how managing and coaching worked. The outcome of this work and the confidence I built eventually led to me managing the England team. By the time he was in the Three Lions dugout, Southgate was confident enough to make the kind of tough decisions needed to transition the national team into a new era, beginning with Wayne Rooney. Roy Hodgson had shoehorned Rooney into midfield in order to keep him in the team in 2016, and Sam Allardyce had even said that it wasn't up to him to say which position the captain played. Southgate, though, recognised that his game was declining, saw he was no longer an automatic starter at Man United, and eventually made the call to drop him from the England squad altogether. Crucially, this decision was completely respected by the country's all-time top scorer, and the pair maintain a good relationship, with Rooney even returning for a one-off friendly against the USA in 2018. And Southgate hasn't shied away from making big calls since then. He even brought a 34-year-old Germain Defoe back into the fold briefly in 2017 and was repaid with a goal in World Cup qualifying, and in the year leading up to the tournament in Russia, began implementing a three-at-the-back system, something almost never seen from an England manager in the modern era. And it worked. Making up for the lack of an out-and-out -out creator, the new shape utilised the creative threat of Kieran Trippier as a wing-back, the recovery pace and defensive know-how of Carl Walker as a right-sided centre-back, and the excellent understanding between Raheem Sterling and Harry Kane as a front two. As a result, an unfancied and somewhat limited squad made it to the semi-finals. And since 2018, Southgate has made a number of decisions which haven't gone down too well with the England fan base, but have seen him vindicated. He wasn't swayed by the clamour to start popular players like Trent Alexander-Arnold and Jack Grealish, and at Euro 2020 has favoured a conservative approach to games, which has brought him criticism for not fully exploiting the side's attacking talent. But Raheem Sterling, the player many wanted to make way for Grealish, has been superb, and Southgate's tactics saw them claim a first victory over Germany in a knockout game since 1966. In his own words, I've always been prepared to not follow the crowd. Sometimes in life, it's not a bad thing to be underestimated. And what has allowed Southgate to make such decisions without upsetting the squad has been his ability to create a harmonious team environment. In the mid-2000s, arguably the last time England were expected to do big things at major tournaments, the Three Lions camp was largely split by club rivalries. The lack of team chemistry was evident on the pitch, as a side containing Gerrard, Lampard, Ferdinand and Terry at their peak struggled to put away teams like Paraguay and Trinidad and Tobago under Sven Joran Eriksson at the 2006 World Cup. And according to Rio Ferdinand, Fabio Capello later brought a prison camp mentality into the setup, with players reportedly not given much to do other than stay in their rooms at the 2010 World Cup. This had all very much changed by Russia 2018. The squad was encouraged to socialise and have fun together, while the media gained unprecedented access to the camp, beaming home light-hearted interviews and shots of players messing around on inflatable unicorns. 
Not only were the players having a better time than their predecessors, but they were also endearing themselves much better to the viewing public. And at the heart of this has been Southgate. There are two words which often pop up in conversations about his managerial style, authenticity and empathy, and these are perhaps the defining qualities which have made him so successful at creating a harmonious team atmosphere. Making the squad feel comfortable and able to express themselves is a fundamental part of this. He values mealtimes as an opportunity for players and staff to talk and reflect, and also makes time to catch up with each squad member one on one, often in informal settings like at the gym or at the end of a training session creating an environment where players are comfortable opening up to the manager, who is just as good a listener as he is a speaker. This is no doubt a skill he honed in his three years managing the under-21 side, where he worked with players like Harry Kane, Jack Grealish, Ben Chilwell and Jordan Pickford. This environment has also given squad members the confidence to speak up in meetings, something Southgate encourages in the belief it will make them work better together on the pitch. As he recently told The Athletic, I like them to have an opinion on the game because, in the 85th minute, they have got to make a decision that might win or lose the match, and we can't make all those decisions from the sidelines. It was also telling that after England's 4-0 win over Ukraine in the Euros quarterfinals, Southgate's first thoughts were with the players like Sam Johnston and Connor Cody who had spent the tournament watching from the bench. It's clear he gives time for everyone in the squad, not just the players he's considering putting on the pitch, and this perhaps more than anything helps maintain squad harmony. One of the things most noted about this England side is that it is unburdened by the country's past failures, something that has been symbolised by their first penalty shootout win at a World Cup and the aforementioned victory over Germany. But this of course goes deeper than just landmark wins or Southgate exercising the ghosts of 96. While the FA's decision to appoint Southgate may have been seen as simply the easiest and cheapest option at the time, in reality it marked a change in thinking, hiring someone who had already worked with the country's next generation of talent and made a success of it. As the FA's head of elite development, he'd also played a key role in drafting new legislation for youth football, promoting the Elite Player Performance Plan which has helped produce a number of players now in the senior squad, and completing the St George's Park National Football Centre. And in 2014 he helped launch the England DNA, a document which called for a new footballing identity based on ball retention, pressing and tactical flexibility to be implemented at every level of the national setup. His excellent working relationship with Steve Holland, who was also his number two in the under-21s, has also been an integral part of this continuity. Southgate and Holland also have access to what has been described as the best analysis department in international football, headed up by former rugby analyst Rhys Long, whose extensive team watched and scrutinised every side the three Lions had a chance of playing at Euro 2020 across the 18 months leading up to the tournament. So by the time Southgate knew they were playing Germany for example, the plan to beat them would have likely already been in place. Long's analysis was also crucial to a change in strategy on penalties, which saw them win two shootouts in two years. And in many ways Southgate has been the ideal leader for this new direction. Open, honest and articulate, the England manager has helped bridge a gap between the players, media and fans which had become ever wider over the previous two decades, something even more impressive during a time when English society as a whole seems increasingly divided. As he said during the 2018 World Cup, the country have wanted something to unite them and the power of sport to unite is often what brings people together. Meanwhile, his open letter to the country, written against the backdrop of the Covid pandemic and rising tension over sections of fans booing the players, displayed a man with a sensitive understanding of the difficult times the country continues to go through, the varying aspects of what it means to be English in the 21st century and the wider responsibility that comes with representing the three lions. Whether or not he wins silverware for England, Southgate has restored faith in a national team which not so long ago appeared without hope, direction or relatability. So that was our explainer on the job Gareth Southgate has done for England. If you enjoyed it, why not leave it a like and let us know your thoughts in the comments below and we'll get discussing. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't done so already and why not click on screen right now for another great Football Daily video. Thanks for watching and we'll see you later.